expected a devastating storm. Uh, we prepared for a devastating storm, and we got a devastating storm, maybe the worst in our city's entire history. Recovering from it is not going to be easy, but by working together, we will recover and we will rebuild our city stronger than ever. Uh, the city, state, and federal governments have been working as close together as I've seen in my 11-odd years in public service. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg there giving an update earlier today on conditions within New York City. He was flanked there by the governor, by Assembly Leader Shelley Silver, by uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, and the uh, local head of the Coast Guard. Uh, the mayor also making political news today, and on a different day, on a, in a different circumstance here on RFL, we would be very focused on politics as we approach Election Day on Tuesday. Uh, the mayor endorsing President Obama today, much to the consternation of some, basically based on his hurricane response and also his commitment to fighting climate change, which both the mayor and the governor have stressed uh, played a role in this storm and would likely play a role in future storms. Again, we'll leave the politics more or less for another day as we all work on one page here to try to recover from the hurricane, but did not want to let that information go without mentioning. It is amazing to see some of the images coming out of New York City. Lower Manhattan still dealing with such a heartbreak at this point. Still no power in many areas in Lower Manhattan and the forecast for that, it will still be days until the power is restored there. Um, our, our reporter Kim Langle has been stationed in New York City, uh, giving us updates on hospitals, on people's conditions, on the power and now we join her in Penn Station. Good evening and before we get into some of the details let me give you a quick overview of what's been happening some of the pluses and minus happening in the New York City transit system right now. Governor Cuomo last night declared a transportation state of emergency which means that all rides on the MTA buses rail and subway lines so far are free today and tomorrow that's the good news we know that Bus service has already resumed, but subway service is still limited. The governor opened up 14 of the city's subway lines out of the 23, though some of the most critical ones, like the 3 and the 7, still remain dark. So a lot of problems with people trying to commute in and out and around the city today. Here at the LIRR, shuttle service is now available between Jamaica and Atlantic Terminal. The Transportation Authority said they are cautiously optimistic about opening more lines shortly. And joining me now is a commuter on the Port Washington line, Barry Heinflig. You had to start your commute twice this morning. What was that like? Horrendous, horrible. Driving into the city, the highways were all backed up. And then uh, they took a train in and you couldn't get a seat. It was just horrible. And then this afternoon, I was on the three, four, uh, 414 train, Sardine King. I had to get off, and now I'm going to get onto the 514. But you just have to bear with it and stick through it, you know. It's tough. It's really tough. So you left Bayside to get on the train, and it was too full. You had to get off. No, going back now, I, I got off. And now I'm getting back on because it's a Sardine King. You can't, you can't get on. You have to get here like an hour early for the train and then rush down the stairs. It's really that bad. What was the reaction of the people on the train when there weren't enough seats? Very, everybody was calm. It's a very somber feeling in New York. It's very, everybody's just like, you know, nothing will bother anybody right now. Everybody's still like touched and it's been, you know, a rough few days for New Yorkers. For how many years have you commuted on the LIRR and have you ever seen it this bad? Never saw this bad. 20 years, longer, I'm 38. So I've been coming into the city for years. Never this bad. I mean, the subways and the transit, the tracks were hit really hard. Even during snowstorms, they get it up and running within two days or they have buses. This was a major disaster. This is worse than, I think, 9-11 disaster-wise, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody was hit. You know, many states were hit on this one. This was tough. Yeah, Barry, we know it's a frustrating situation, and we hope you get home safe. We're going to let you make it on your train Thank now. You. That's a similar Take story. Take care, Barry. It's a similar story of what we're hearing from other commuters on the Long Island Railroad is that the communication from the LIRR to the transit riders isn't that great. A lot of them don't know when they're going. They're not exactly sure what track they're supposed to be on. And so the situation has seemed to be perpetuating and more and more frustrations seem to be rising. From the LIRR in Penn Station, Kim Langel, Fios One News. Well, it is nice to see that the lights are back on there and things are starting to get back to uh, some sense of normal. But again, lower Manhattan completely shut off. People are actually dumpster diving 
to get food uh, because they cannot go and get food. A lot of these stores throwing out what they might have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is like a different world uh, down in lower Manhattan, really just so cut off from the rest of the island. And you know, if you've ever been to Manhattan, there's just those different sections and different neighborhoods and, you know, so many people really, really suffering there. But slow steps. I, I read a quote and I, I, I can't remember who the public official was, but it was a public official saying, what we've got in Lower Manhattan is almost what we feared coming out of 9-11, which is uh, Lower Manhattan basically being cut off from the rest of the city uh, and and subject to different rules. And, and you in know, in a way it is. In a way it, it certainly is, although uh, hopefully coming back sooner rather than later. Uh, Penn Station beginning to get some more activity in it, as mm -hmm. Kim was showing us, as they get more trains uh, uh, that are able to reach that area. The subway lines, it looks as though we'll be able to get there but the transit lines, the LIRR, are still having a lot of difficulty. It's reliant on those East River tunnels right. uh, that took on the salt water and suffered so much damage they can't quite get them there as well. We should point out that there's also all sorts of uh, trouble trying to get New Jersey transit back up and running. Uh, that, of course, would uh, enter in a different area. but It's going to be a crawl. It's definitely going to be a crawl. And even though things are coming back online and buses and trains, you will see more and more go online. It is still going to be at a different kind of schedule. Some are coming on as a reduced schedule. Some are only making stops every hour for a pickup. Um, some are really having to take different routes. A lot of people going into work today having to take a completely different route and it's taking hours upon hours. Yeah, the, for people who can't rely on the mass transit, they have to use their cars. I, do we know where these pictures were taken? Uh, but it, it certainly get a sense of the, the traffic jams, the lineup right. of cars, uh, and of course the high occupancy rules in effect for Manhattan. This, this was the West Side Highway. Uh, just to give you some idea of how tough it is, the, the Lincoln Tunnel, one of the few that remained open all the way through the storm. Well, they had originally shut down the center tube of the Lincoln Tunnel, um, and that was shut down. But, yes, it's back open still, as you mentioned, with that high um, vehicle. High occupancy, high, yeah. Right, exactly. And uh, it, it's getting harder and harder. And gas, you have to remember, gas is a hard commodity to come by these days. And if you are driving, trying to find that gas, you have to kind of add in two extra hours because it might take you just that long to find a station that's open? And, and absolutely, and, and people beginning to get on each other's nerves as it lines outside of gas stations. And we're seeing sort of the two different sides of the story here. People growing a little impatient on the roads, long lines to get in for mass transit. And then you saw some other shots from inside darkened restaurants where people are, are gathering and trying to sort of live through the aftermath together. Uh, and, uh, and you're seeing the best of people there. but. You know, the gas stations, if they have power, that's one of the problems in getting out gas. Some gas stations running out of gas, mm -hmm. as you might imagine. There's a, uh, the massive crush, both for people to fill up their tanks and uh, their external tanks so that they can power their generators back at home. Uh, and, you know, the governor of New York, the governor of New Jersey, the president of the United States asking everybody for continued patience. Although that may be in shorter supply than some of the gas and food. I think it's slowly going to be, we, you know, people are going to slowly start to lose their patience here. They're just saying, why? Why haven't we seen that immediate help? Um, I do want to just remember, just reiterate what Governor Cuomo did say today, talking about transportation, that again, tomorrow, one tube of the Holland Tunnel will be open. Buses only, again, his message, leave the car at home. It's going to be easier if you leave the car at home and uh, take that single tube from the Holland Tunnel. Also, they're watching those price gougings um, or possibility of price gouging for any small business, for any gas station. Um, you know, there's help out there and the goal to get Manhattan back by Saturday. And one additional number from the from the governor for businesses or homeowners as they're trying to get through the process here, 855-NYS-SEND. Uh, that's the beginning of the, the process in order to uh, get some assistance from the state and, and file through from disaster uh, assistance. We'll be getting you more information on that as the evening continues. Absolutely. That is going to bring this uh, special edition of RFL to a close uh, as we broadcast on RNN, uh, Fios 1, WTVE and Potomac. We're going to continue this coverage on Fios One News in just a moment. Stay with us.